Usability considerations and basic editing. Once that you are done doing your recording and if you gave a very straightforward presentation and you're very happy with your results, you can go ahead and export it and then use the resulting file for distribution to your students. Nonetheless, sometimes your delivery of the recording is not perfect and deleting a little bit over here and cutting a little bit over there will improve the quality of your production considerably. So this section is meant to tackle that. First we're going to cover basic editing and for that we're going to review Camtasia's interface. This is the Camtasia interface and it is divided into three main parts. This part is called the bin. This is where all your media files are going to live and your recordings are going to be placed. This area of the bin is also going to show different type of information depending on what you click over here. This area over here is the viewing area and this is where your video will be showing. This is the area where you're going to have an actual visual representation of your video and you're going to be able to know what you're doing exactly at the time of editing. And this part over here is where you're going to place your videos, your audio, your images, and everything is going to be placed in a timeline fashion, which will play from beginning to end. Also, these three areas and the type of things that you can do with these three areas can also be accomplished through the menu structure. In other words, the menu structure will provide you with means to do the exact same thing that you would do with the graphical interface. Very well, let's import a video. I am going to come to the bin area and I am going to right click to import media or I can go to the file menu and choose from here import media. Either way will work fine. In this case, I am going to grab the news map recording that I did a few moments ago and I am going to import that into the bin. And there it is. If you were to import other media files, they would also appear here next to this video. And it would be the same with the audio files or the image files. Now that the video is there, I am going to right click on it and I am going to request that it's added to the timeline at the playhead. And there it goes. There's another way to bring this video into the timeline. So I am going to momentarily delete it from here and I am just going to grab the video and drag it directly into the timeline. The main difference is that we might have to do a little bit of extra work dragging this video back and forth so it can be placed exactly where we want it to be. In this timeline area, you're also going to see this triangle that you can click and drag and this triangle is normally known as the head and the head indicates what part of the video you're looking at. In this area over here you can get to see your recording at different sizes. Right now we are zoom in so to speak in the viewing area at a level of 61%. But if we were interested in seeing what would be the actual resolution of the video that we're working on, you will need to click there and click on 100%. This is the final size of your production when it's rendered. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make this go to 50% or so, so I can have a good viewing of the entire area and where my video fits in there. Another option that you are going to have in this viewing area is over here. In this icon over here, you're going to be able to show the properties pane for that video. And that properties pane is going to show you if your video is scaled, the level of opacity of your video, and other properties that you might be able to change if you desire to do so. The same happens with these other button over here where you can hide the assets and effects pane or you can show it and this would allow you to increase or decrease the amount of space that you have for the viewing area while you're working. 
I would also like to call your attention to this ability in Camtasia to resize the different working areas to fit what you're doing at different moments. This might become handy during your production process, so basically what you need to do is to move the cursor very slowly and at some moment that cursor is going to change shape and that means that you can change this viewing area. Now for this interface it would be important for me to say that if you go to the menu structure you're going to find some of the usual functions that you can apply to different media in different software packages and you should be familiar with these already. One of the things that I would like you to be aware of is the undo option. The undo option is going to be your best friend in the editing process because you can pretty much move forward and make any edit and if you're not satisfied with the results it is fairly easy to undo. One of the things that I also recommend as a means to undo which provides other type of access to information that you have been working on is by saving your file with different names as you move forward. So you can, for example, name it Newsmap1 and after you have done some changes you can quickly save it as Newsmap2 and then Newsmap3 and so on and that allows you to later on in time be able to go back to any of the versions that you had saved before and then um, grab any changes from there if it's necessary. Now if we move to this lower part of the screen you're going to find a couple of magnifying glass icons and this basically refers to how zoom in into the timeline you are. So if I move this to the left side I am zooming out so to speak and I am going to be able to see the entire recording at once. Now if I move to the other side, I'm going to place the head over here and you move to the other side, you're going to get a very fine detailed view of your audio file and you're going to be able to do more fine editing if you are viewing your timeline in this fashion. One of the things that I would like to make you aware of as you zoom in and zoom out is that these markers over here will give you a sense of how deep in your zoom you are. So if you keep on zooming this will increase in size and you will see that this is one second, another second, another second and so on. Now I'm going to reduce this so we can see all of the recording again. The best way to keep on learning the interface and how it all works together is by actually going through different process of editing and it will become clear how all the different parts of the interface interact with your video and then we're going to cover many of the different tools that Camtasia gives you for you to do a better recording. Finally, we're going to make two changes now that we are covering the Camtasia's interface and it is how to install a component for recording system audio and then we're also going to cover how to change the recordings folder. For that I am going to bring my Camtasia window and I'm going to go to the Camtasia 2 menu and I'm going to click on preferences. In this area I'm going to be able to click on install component for the system audio. What this means is that Camtasia is going to be able to record not only what you're saying in your microphone but also is going to record the audio of your computer in a different track and that is very helpful if you're demonstrating certain things that require audio. So I would like to recommend you to install this component and the way that it happens is by clicking there and then clicking on install here. I'm going to click on continue, continue. I have 152 kilobytes of space. My password and there we go. Now I can close this and the system audio component has been installed. The other change that I would like to recommend is to take away these delete recordings after 14 days. 
and this might be useful for certain uses of the software but not for all of them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the location of the folder in which all the recordings are saved into and I'm going to click in this button that says change and I'm going to go to my desktop where I already have screen capturing tutorials and a recordings folder ready to go. And the reason why I'm saving all my recordings in a folder on the desktop is mostly for demonstration purposes. You can save these anywhere where you will like in your own computer. So once that that is done, I'm going to close this window and everything is set for me to continue.